So we all know Chase dies. A lot. Oh no. Yeah, but not today. Well, today we want to show you the nine worst ways to die in space. Wait, what? Yeah, that's right. We're taking Chase to the most perilous places in space. Some of these will lead to deaths that are uh, pretty gruesome. Uh, why can't we ever make a video that's the most relaxing places to take vacations in space? There are 200 billion trillion stars scattered throughout space. While they light up the universe and provide us with the heat needed for life, these balls of gas are extremely lethal. Quite regularly, stars give off intense bursts of radiation and energy known as solar flares. These bursts have so much energy that they strip surrounding planets of their atmosphere and unleash deadly radiation into space. Proxima Centauri is one of the most volatile stars ever discovered. As a red dwarf star, it's small, but it has extraordinarily powerful magnetic fields. These fields frequently clash, triggering intensely violent solar flares. Scientists once reported a solar flare so bright that the star temporarily became 14,000 times brighter than its average state. Okay, well, nothing's happening now. And you said it was unpredictable, so how do we even know when the next big solar flare is gonna be? Electrical systems failing. Outer shell burning. R Rico, reroute auxiliary power to life support systems. Rerouting to. Oh no! 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 When a sudden surge of high energy particles hits your spaceship, it would fry every piece of electronics. In a matter of seconds, X-rays and gamma rays would rip through your spaceship, and you'd be suffering from intense radiation poisoning. Oh, I don't like the sound of that. With a direct solar flare blast that strong, the radiation would cause severe alterations to your DNA. You'd feel nauseous and incredible weakness, signs of acute radiation poisoning. At the same time, your life support systems would fail and you'd have a hard time breathing. It would take just five minutes for radiation to destroy your organs. The good news is you'd likely lose consciousness and die before your ship ran out of oxygen, because suffocating on a damaged ship sounds a lot worse than a nauseating death from radiation. <sighs> okay, this time I'm going to be flying further away from those radiation spitting stars. There are invisible forces at play all throughout the vastness of space. Every star, planet, and moon, everything has a gravitational pull, and, and if you don't maneuver carefully, you'll end up in a pretty disastrous situation. Yeah, 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 I'm an experienced space adventurer. I think I can navigate gravity. <laughs> Besides, I'm on my way to a somewhat familiar place, Kepler-22b. <gasps> <sighs> you know, I really gotta give this place a second chance. <laughs> that would be Rocks S 42BB, a gas giant that's nine times the mass of Jupiter. <laughs> yeah, it's got an incredibly strong gravitational pull. What? No. Oh, no, no. No. Oh, no. Not again! The enormous gravitational pull from this massive planet would catch you in the gravity well trap. Gravity well is space around a massive object like this planet that pulls all nearby objects toward it. And it's dangerous. Your ship's thrusters would fail to counteract this gravity. You'd be rapidly pulled toward the gas giant. 
all the while experiencing some serious G-forces. You and your ship wouldn't stand a chance against Rock's S42 BB. The G-forces you'd be feeling would cause you to black out. You'd be falling deeper and deeper into this planet's atmosphere until your ship violently breaks apart. And when your ship does break apart, you'll be flung out into the storm of toxic gases and superheated winds. It'd be brutal. <sighs> okay, granted, that landing was not so smooth. But this time, I'm gonna land on purpose and I will survive. Landing on planets with an atmosphere is extremely complicated because an atmosphere is full of particles that create intense friction during entry. The intense friction generates enormous heat and if you're not careful, your spaceship will burn up before reaching the surface. If Kepler-22b had an Earth-like atmosphere, landing there would be tricky. You'd need to carefully maneuver your ship to manage heat and turbulence. <sighs> okay, lock in, Chase, lock in. Just need to do the S-turns. <sighs> Make sure the broad side of the ship is exposed. <sighs> at this point, your spaceship is moving at 28,000 kilometers per hour. The atmosphere of Kepler-22b would create resistance, heating your ship's exterior to a blistering 2,000 degrees Celsius. If your ship's heat shield fails, the cabin would become unbearably hot in seconds. Ooh, ah, oh, what? Kepler's supposed to be balmy. This is way too hot. <sighs> Intense turbulence would begin to tear your ship apart. This would mean decompression and failure of all life support systems. But what about auxiliary power? <sighs> okay, Kepler. You win this time. You know what? Of all the planets in the solar system, Earth is actually the only one I haven't died on. I do see why y'all prefer to live there and not on Mars. Well, Earth is a particularly tough planet to land on. Not only are you navigating its gravitational pull and atmospheric friction, but you also have to dodge a ton of space junk. Literally there's an estimated 9,000 tons of junk in Earth's orbit, over 100 million bits of small debris, and about 25,000 pieces larger than 10 centimeters. Stuff like old satellites and missile debris get trapped here, some traveling at speeds over eight kilometers per second. That's 10 times faster than a bullet. No worries, I got this. <sighs> okay. Yep, yeah, I knew that was gonna happen. Spacecraft already have to carefully navigate through Earth's low orbit, avoiding debris with tracking and collision avoidance maneuvers, but things may get much worse. If we don't do anything about this debris, it'll keep colliding and breaking into smaller fragments, eventually forming a dense, unmanageable cloud of space junk around Earth. This scenario is known as the Kessler Syndrome, and it's bad because it could make it nearly impossible to leave Earth. All spacecraft would face a high risk of collision, even the tiniest piece of orbital debris traveling at thousands of kilometers per hour could cause catastrophic damage. <sighs> this has been a really tough few days. Every time I die, I feel a little less and less like myself, like a shell of a man. 
I just, I need somewhere that I can go and be away from people and things. <sighs> well, that works out perfectly because your next stop is Triton, one of Neptune's moons. It has no stuff and no people. Oh, okay, great, let's go. Triton is one of the coldest moons in the solar system. Its surface is so icy that it reflects almost all of the sunlight it receives, which is very little to begin with. The surface temperature here is roughly minus 235 degrees Celsius, which makes it the perfect place to freeze to death. Even NASA's most advanced exploration extravehicular mobility unit suits developed for the Artemis missions to the moon will only withstand temperatures of minus 173 degrees Celsius. And Triton is a lot colder than that. What? You, you sent me here just to die? <sighs> Ugh. I'll remember this what-if guy. <sighs> on Triton, you wouldn't lose heat immediately like you do on Earth. That's because Triton doesn't have an atmosphere, so there's no air to carry away your heat through convection. It would take you some time to die here. Your heart would start slowing down to 30 beats per minute. Blood would no longer be delivering oxygen to your body. You'd be completely numb. It would take about an hour or two for your body to freeze solid. I'm not dying anymore, no way. I'm done, okay? I'm upgrading the ship so it's gonna protect me from radiation, uh, freezing temperatures, micrometeoroids. It's gonna protect me from everything. Good luck trying to kill me this time, Peter. Ow. Ah! What the? Oof, that was a ah. micrometeoroid. A tiny piece of debris that can travel at tens of thousands of kilometers per hour. They usually burn up in a planet's atmosphere because of their tiny size, but out in space, they're like bullets. Most astronauts are pretty unlikely to get hit by one, but Chase is an exceptionally unlucky guy. <laughs> Rico, open the door! Rico, door! Door, Rico! No, no, not... Oh, Rico! So, right now, Chase is experiencing ebulism, which is a fancy way to say decompression, which is a fancy way to say that the rapid change in pressure is causing all of the liquids in his body to boil and evaporate. Yeah, this one might be the worst yet. <sighs> okay, that was bad. That was really, really bad. But if I just keep working on the ship, I'll be safe. I'll get it all done, and then I won't get hit by another... Ugh. Oh, are you kidding me? Come on! Oxygen levels critical. Oh, oh no. <sighs> and that was a huge mistake. In the vacuum of space, there's no air pressure. And... Your spacesuit just took a hit, which means that the pressure inside it will change and cause the air to expand. That big gulp of air you just took, that's about to explode your lungs in three, two, one. As your lungs get torn from the inside, air bubbles will enter your bloodstream, and that will lead to an embolism that will block blood flow to your vital organs, like your heart and your brain you heart attack, stroke, and death. Oh. 
space is so treacherous that even the safety of a ship, yes, even an upgraded one, can't always protect you. There's not much anyone can do against the invisible threat of a black hole. With gravitational pulls so strong they even suck in light, once you realize you're close to one, it's already too late. Yeah, and there's probably a black hole right next to me, isn't there? Oh my god, there is one! Oh, Rico, fire all engines! Reverse! Full reverse! Come on, Rico! Auxiliary power, Rico! All engines in reverse. <laughs> Getting sucked into a black hole, you experience so much gravitational pull, your body literally gets spaghettified. You turn into a long strand of human spaghetti. There was no avoiding that one. Ah, oh, that was brutal, man. I mean, that's almost as bad as the time you killed me off on every single planet in the solar system. Wait. How am I not tied to the spaceship? Hey! Hey! Uh, no! No! Rico! If you can hear me, send out the grappling hook right now! Space is a scary place. It's dark, full of deadly radiation, and no one can hear you scream. With over 5,000 discovered exoplanets out there, Chase has a long list of destinations to die on, like Proxima Centauri B. But that's a story for another What If. Hey guys, we've got some fantastic news. What If has been nominated for a Webby Award for Best Science and Education Channel. The Webby Awards are kind of like the Oscars, but for the internet, they're a pretty big deal. And it would mean the world if you voted for us. It only takes a few seconds. Just click on the link in the description, click vote on What If, make an account, and that's it. If we win, it would be a huge honor for everyone on the team, and it'll help us make even better videos for you. So, once again, click on the link in the description and vote for the show. Remember, every single vote counts, and you've only got till April 17th, so act fast. Thanks so much.